Hi, I'm Amanda Jane Woodall and welcome to my fashion school. So today I'm starting a new series where we're going to be learning about successful yet controversial fashion brands. So trigger warning, we're going to be dealing with brands that have some problematic themes. So we might discuss things that you find a little bit shocking or distasteful. And this is necessary for us to discuss so that we know what the important issues are when starting our own fashion brand. Fashion needs to be a constantly evolving process where we learn and make changes to improve. Today's conversation is going to be about the all-American brand, Abercrombie and Fitch. Brand identity. Abercrombie and Fitch is a heritage-based brand that was established in 1892. It sold items to complement a, a rich man's lifestyle, including sporting goods and outdoor pursuits. Les Wexner was a retail mogul and he acquired the brand in 1988. In 1992, he appointed Mike Jeffries as the CEO. And Mike Jeffries was known to have an obsessive personality and he dedicated his entire existence to making this brand a success. And he expected anyone who worked for Abercrombie & Fitch to live and breathe the lifestyle of the brand. He had a very specific and unwavering vision of who the customer was and he wanted to sell these clothes exclusively to wealthy white American students. They would scout at local colleges to find who they considered the most good looking and popular people and got them on board to work with the brand. And what they thought this would do would be to give their clothing an automatic seal of approval from people who were already admired by others. And this would mean they'd be copied and people would buy the clothing to have their style. Mike Jeffrey's visions of the stores were meticulously designed using audio, visuals and olfactory stimulation to attract its young customer. The stores were hosted by muscular, model-looking men who stood at the entrance with no shirt on and the stock of the shop was not displayed in the store windows so that you would be enticed to walk into the shop. Fashion photography was very important to this brand as this was the mid-90s when social media was only just beginning and this meant that advertising was done by photographs in magazines and in videos. Bruce Weber, the brand's photographer, took photographs that showed masculinity, camaraderie and adventure, which meant that we were less focused on the actual product and more on the lifestyle. Wearing the Abercrombie logo told a story of who you were through idealisation of the demographic and storytelling. During the 2000s, the brand strategy had been very successful, making the CEO and shareholders very rich. They opened a thousand stores and solved $4.5 billion of stock annually. Controversy. As we enter the 2010s, the sales of Abercrombie began to decline. And this was elevated by constant media scrutiny. Now people were connecting through social media and could share their horrific experiences of discrimination in the workplace. In particular, this had been aimed at non-white workers. Abercrombie & Fitch had already shown a lack of respect for its Asian customers when they sold an offensive t-shirt with a slogan that showed racist stereotypes. The staff were ordered to burn these t-shirts 
as the Asian American community protested outside storefronts. A year later, a lawsuit was actioned by minority applicants who said that they had been forced to work night shifts and do cleaning jobs rather than do the same job as their white counterparts. And interviews with ex-management revealed that they were required to hire and fire staff based on whether they fitted the looks policy of the store, which was white, physically fit and classically attractive. And these standards had been directed and promoted by CEO Mike Jeffries. But rather than admit the company's illegal and racist policies, the company decided to pay out a $40 million settlement. The courts insisted on policy changes for the company, including hiring diversity officers. But the problem was, as the racism was coming from the top of the company, these people were unable to enforce real and impactful change. Jeffries was continually scrutinised in the media after he made claims about his bigoted beliefs. He said that his brand was meant to be exclusionary and that he had in fact designed it to be this way. And petitions were set up by advocates for diversity asking people to boycott the brand. In 2015, Abercrombie & Fitch was successfully taken to court by the Equal Opportunities Commission on behalf of a lady who was denied employment for wearing a religious headscarf. Management had stated that the garment did not comply with their looks policy. The defence gave a very weak argument trying to compare the hijab to a baseball cap and providing no reasonable explanation for this misconduct. The Supreme Court ruled 8 to 1 in the favour of plaintiff Samantha Elaf, who claimed that the company had discriminated against her based on her religion. And this was seen as a landmark victory for minority women and could encourage other people to speak out about the discrimination that they faced. During this time, the CEO, Mike Jeffries, retired with a $27 million payout. He leaves a legacy of speculation about his racist views and his inappropriate behaviour towards male models. And similarly, there has also been lawsuits filed against Les Wexner and Bruce Weber about their abuses of power and severe misconduct. What have we learned? Learning about this brand, we can agree that it's important to consider the morals of the companies that we purchase from. In the sales and marketing of Abercrombie & Fitch, there was serious concern for misconduct and discrimination. And this meant that the brand could not sustain a healthy media presence. This in turn affected the sales of their product as the design of the clothing was not strong enough to combat this backlash. So we have come to the end of this video, but I will see you again in my upcoming videos where we're going to be looking at the life story and style of a Spice Girl and also carrying on our sewing journey of our summer outfit. Put your hand put your hand It sold items to complement 